Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Today is January 30th, 2021. And um, here in the U.S. and also the United Kingdom, oh, it's a good one. It is National Croissant Day. I definitely am going to need to eat some croissants on this day, which means I need to go get some vegan croissants from the store before today. Uh, it is also um, here in India, not here in India, in India, it is the anniversary of the Gandhi Association. Uh, so, geez, wow, maybe I should just start this episode over. It is the anniversary of the Gandhi assassination. Uh, so uh, it's celebrating the uh, the death of Gandhi. It's not a hyperlink for me to click on it right now to give you more information, but uh, that's probably something good to celebrate because Gandhi was uh, something else. Oh, maybe it's a good day to watch the movie Gandhi, because most of you probably haven't seen that. Um, also, in India, it is Martyr Day, so I wonder if that's connected to Gandhi at all. And then in Greece, it is the Three Holy Hierarchs. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Um, but you can uh, celebrate Three Holy Hierarchs while watching the movie Gandhi and eating croissants. Okay, the first word is capital, but this one is spelled C-A-P-I-T-O-L. Uh, the other one that we had a couple episodes ago and all of the last episode with were with an A-L. Uh, by the way, the last episode, I don't know about you, but that was not the most interesting set of words. Okay, this is a noun from 1679. 1A, a building in which a state legislative body meets. 1B, a group of buildings in which the functions of state government are carried out. Number two is capitalized. The building in which the U.S. Congress meets at Washington. The Capitol building is called the Capitol, and it is in the Capitol. Uh, this is from Latin Capitolium, which is the Temple of Ju uh, Jupiter at Rome in the Capitoline Hill. So there's a hill in Rome called Capitoline, and it is the uh, the Temple of Jupiter um, in on that hill in Rome is called the Capitolium. Uh, and that was probably, um, you know, where they did most of the business for Rome, I'm guessing. So that's sort of how it just became uh, the word that we use now for the uh, where people meet to do government stuff and also where the, the head of a state or a, a, a country is, the capital. Okay, next is Capitol Hill. Two words with uh, uh, that they are capitalized. Capital, the C in capital is capitalized. Noun from 1935. Maybe there's a song there. The C in capital is capitalized. The H in hill is also capitalized. Uh, this is the legislative branch of the U.S. government. It is Capitol Hill, which is in Washington. It is the site of the U.S. Capitol. I think it's on a hill. Maybe. Probably. I've been there. I don't remember. Next is Capitoline. So we saw that uh, in the last one. Capitoline Hill in Rome. So this is, uh, it, it does have a capital C. This is an adjective from 1667 of or relating to the smallest of the seven hills of ancient Rome, the temple on it, or the gods worshipped there. So you can use capitoline to describe this hill. There were seven hills in Rome. Uh, this is the smallest of them. Um, the temple, there's a temple on it, so you could call the temple capitoline, which they, they did. Um, and then the gods worshipped there were also capitaline. So we know Jupiter was one of them. Were there other gods that were worshipped there? I don't know. Okay, next we have capitular. This is an adjective from circa 1525 of or relating to an ecclesiastical chapter. Next is capitulary. Capitulary. Yep, uh, this is a noun from 1650. A civil or ecclesiastical ordinance. Also, a collection of ordinances. I got all these ordinances. I got a collection of them. They are capitulary. Uh, this is from Middle Latin capitulare, which literally is document divided into sections. Uh, and then capitulum is a section or a chapter. And there's more at the word chapter. So chapter, capitulary. Those are related. Next, we have capitulate. Verb from 1596 and i think it is only intransitive one number one is archaic synonyms are parley or parlay and negotiate i think it might be parlay even though it's spelled with an ey uh 2a to surrender often after negotiation negotiation of terms 
uh, to surrender often after negotiation of terms, you will capitulate. And to B, to cease resisting. Synonym is acquiescence. Acqui- no, acquiesce. Not acquiescence. Just acquiesce. And then a synonym for all of it is the word yield. Uh, so this is from the Middle Latin verb capitulare, which means to distinguish by heads or chapters. Next is capitulation, noun from 1535. One, a set of terms or articles constituting an agreement between governments. To A, the act of surrendering or yielding. Surrendering. Yeah, that came out weird. I said surrendering, I think. I, I'm surrendering. Surrendering. No, you're surrendering or yielding. Uh, and then to B, the terms of surrender. Next we have capitulum. Noun from circa 1755. One, a rounded protuberance of an anatomical part as a bone. It is the capitulum. I wonder how that happens. It is of the anatomical. So is it like the part of the bone? Like I'm sort of imagining uh, where the knee is. There's a couple rounded parts at the end of it. Would those be ca- called capitulums? Or is it a thing that happens to a bone that shouldn't be happening to a bone? And that is a capitulum. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. Okay, number two. A racemose inflorescence with the axis shortened and dilated to form a rounded or flattened cluster of sessile flowers. And then it says to see the inflorescence illustration. How is there an illustration for inflorescence? That seems like more of an adjective, but I don't know what inflorescence means, I guess. So we'll find out what that is later. Um, This is from Latin, or it's a Latin word that means small head. Uh, there's more at the word chapter, uh, so that is what uh, the ro- this uh, rounded protuberance on a bone is. It's just a little thing that's sort of shaped like your head. Next is caplet, C-A-P-L-E-T, noun from 1937, a capsule-shaped medicinal tablet. I feel like we had another one that was similar to that, which I cannot think of. We had cap full, uh, I don't know, oh, here's... Here's one. No, that's something else. That's a caplet. This is a caplet. I don't know, but that's what it is. It's a little mm, tablet. Next is capo, C-A-P-O, first form, noun from 1926. A movable bar attached to the fingerboard of a fretted instrument to uniformly raise the pitch of all the strings. Uh, But I think that you can also choose to put it on all the strings or only some of the strings uh, but they all have to be in order. So you could like skip the low E or you could skip the high E or a couple more if you wanted to. I'm not really sure why you'd want to, I guess. I think that would give you some other options for making chords on the guitar. But typically people just put it across all the strings. Uh, this is short for capotasto. Are we going to see that in here? Capota? No, I don't think so. Uh, short for capotasto, which is uh, f- an Italian word, which literally means head of fingerboard. Head of fingerboard. So the head of the fingerboard is a capotasto, and then they made this mobile one, and they called it a capo. Maybe it's capotasto. Capotasto? I don't know how to speak Italian. Uh, Okay, moving on to the second form, but this one is pronounced capo or just uh, capo, capo. Either one of those I think is fine. This is a noun from circa 1952, the head of a branch of a crime syndicate. And this is an Italian word, which means head or chief. Capo, capo. uh, And then it's uh, also from the Latin caput, which we have seen many, many times, which I think just means head. Uh, Okay, moving on to capoeira. You could also just say capoeira. C-A-P-O-E-I-R-A. Noun from 1945. A Brazilian dance of African origin that incorporates martial arts movements such as kicks and chops. I think there's a great Bob's Burgers episode with capoeira. Uh, this is from, uh, or it is, it is Brazilian Portuguese, and it means a kind of martial art. Ruffian skilled in this art, I guess would also be called a capoeira. Also, fugitive slave living in the forest. What? A fugitive slave living in the forest is a capoeira? Um, okay. Uh, this is from Capao, which is an island of forest in a clear-cut area. Island 
of forest in it. So it's a so it's a little island um, of a clear cut area within a forest. I think that's what it's saying. Um, and so maybe that's where they would practice capoeira. Um, it is also from a Tupi word, uh, kaapau, uh, c or k a a p a u, which is from the word kaa, which means forest plus pau, which means round. So round forest, a round section in a forest, maybe. Um, oh no, it does say island of forest in a clear cut area. So maybe it's a there is just an open field, and then there's like a small round forest in the middle. And that's a capoeira. How that's connection connected to a martial art or a fugitive? I'm not entirely sure. This word got way more interesting than I expected. Uh, so maybe I'll have to find more information about that, where it came from. That was pretty interesting. Okay, moving on to capon or just capon. Noun from before the 12th century, a castrated male chicken. That is called a capon. Uh, let's see, this is uh, akin to the Lithuanian kapoti, which means to mince, M-I-N-C-E, uh, from the Greek kap, uh, kaptin, which means to cut. So yes, they minced and cut something off the male chicken, and it became a capon. Next is kapanata. Uh, this is a noun from 1931, a relish of chopped eggplant and assorted vegetables, a kapanata. Uh, this is an Italian word, if you couldn't tell, from the Italian dialect in Sicily, capunata, which means sailor's dish of biscuit steeped in oil and vinegar. Sounds good. Uh, with chopped vegetables served similarly. Uh, probably also steeped in oil and vinegar. This is, this is from the Catalonian word uh, caponada, which means dry bread soaked in oil and vinegar, and perhaps from uh, capo, which means capon, which is probably that male chicken. So maybe they threw in some chicken too. And then our last word is capote. C-A-P-O-T-E. Capote. It is a noun from 1799. A usually long and hooded cloak or overcoat. Uh, this is a, a French word, uh, which means uh, which is from the word cape. They probably would say it differently. And that just means cloak. So cloak, cape, capote. So we had capital, capital hill, capitaline, capitular, capitulary, capitulate, capitulation, capitulum, caplet, capo, capo, capoeira, uh, capon, caponata, and capote. Um, hmm. Well, I think I'm going to pick capoeira as the word of the episode because uh, I thought that etymology was super interesting. Um, not that I do any martial arts, especially not this one, but, uh, you know, it's probably at the very least some good exercise. So go practice your capoeira in a forest, maybe? Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, but also be respectful of it, of its origins and maybe find out more about that and the culture that is related to that. Um, did I sing anything? Not really. Do I have to sing a song about capoeira? Capoeira capoeira go do some martial arts and i don't know i think that's fine thank you very much for listening and until next time this is spencer dispensing information goodbye hello word nerds welcome to the dictionary today's episode is uh it's it's, it's the same they're all the same uh today is january 31st in the u.s it is the grammy award supposedly not sure how that's gonna happen uh, i don't usually watch those um, but yay for Grammy Awards. It is also National Hot Chocolate Day in the U.S. Definitely gotta have some hot chocolate today. In India, this is a good one, World Leprosy Eradication Day. So they got rid of leprosy and it's world, it's the world day. So maybe the whole world should be celebrating this. In the Netherlands, it is Queen Beatrix's birthday. And in Bolivia, it is the Tupiza New Year, Indigenous New Year. Ah, that's cool. So uh, that's when the indigenous people would celebrate the new year because it doesn't really matter when. You just have to pick a day and that's the new year for that group of people. Uh, So yes, happy new year. Uh, Okay, the first word is capaletti. C-A-P-P-E-L-L-E-T-T-I. Capaletti, noun from 1945. Uh, Okay, this is pasta in the form of little peaked hats filled with a savory mixture. 
have I ever have Capaletti? I think I'm going to need to. Uh, what what can be in these hats? How little are they? Can you put them on a Lego character? I don't know. It's it's hat pasta. Okay, this is Italian. Obviously, um, it is the plural of capelletto, which is the diminutive of capello, which means hat. Uh, so it's little, little hats. And uh, Latin capa, head covering, more at cap. Okay, good for that. Next is capper, noun from 1587. Number one, one that caps. As 1A, a device that fits caps on bottles. 1B, synonyms are finale, climax, and clincher. It is the capper. Uh, Number two, a lure or decoy, especially in an illicit or questionable activity. And a synonym is shill, S-H-I-L-L. Next is capping, noun from the 14th century, something that caps. Next is cappuccino, noun from 1893. Espresso coffee topped with frothed hot milk or cream and often flavored with cinnamon or just whatever flavoring you want. You could put whatever you want in there. Uh, This is an Italian word and it literally means capuchin with a capital C. And this is from the likeness of its color to that of a capuchin's habit, uh, habit, habit or habitat. It says habit. Um, I assume that's the capuchin monkey that they're talking about. Um, And so is it the it, the the likeness of its color to that of the the capuchin's face or its its habitat i'm not entirely sure but it's something related to capuchin monkeys and uh i think that's pretty funny cuz i had no clue that that's where it came from uh okay uh next we have caprizi or caprese yeah i think it's caprese or caprese c a p r e s e noun from 1978 a salad consisting of slices of mozzarella and tomatoes, basil, and olive oil, or Italian dressing. This is Italian, and it is short for insalata caprese, which literally is salad in the manner of capri. Where is, is capri a location in Italy? I should look it up. It probably is. So that's how they make salads in capri. Caprese, I thought I had some thought there. If you want a caprese salad, you're just going to get some mozzarella and tomatoes and basil and olive oil or Italian dressing. That's a caprese salad. Capre- they say caprese, though. I should say caprese. Uh, okay, next we have capric, capric acid. Yes, capric acid. Noun from 1830. A fatty acid, C10H2O2, found in fats and oils and used in flavors and perfumes. Uh, so this is from the Latin... Uh, caper, which means goat. We learned that a while ago. Uh, it's from its odor. So this capric acid has a fun, fun odor that maybe it smells like a goat. There's more at the word capriole. Next we have capriccio. Capriccio. C-A-P-R-I-C-C-I-O. Noun from 1665. Number one. Synonyms are fancy and whimsy. Capriccio. Number two, synonyms are caper and f- uh, prank. I thought it said frank, but no, prank. That makes more sense. Three, an instrumental piece in free form, usually, no. Oh, yes, usually lively in tempo and brilliant in style. A capriccio. It's very fun and whimsical. Next, we have caprice. Uh, C A P R I C E. It looks like cap rice. Cap rice but it's caprice, noun from 1667, 1A, a sudden, impulsive, and seemingly unmotivated notion or action. 1B, a sudden, usually unpredictable condition, change, or series of changes, as in the caprices of the weather. Is that, am I saying that right? Caprices of the weather, I think so. Number two, a disposition to do things impulsively. Number three, we have the number three definition for the word Capriccio, which is what we just read, um, which is the uh, the freeform music, uh, tempo and brilliant in style. Uh, there is some synonym information. Caprice, whim, vagary, and crotchet. I, th- I, th- I think that's, cro- is it crotchet or crochet? I don't know. Uh, those mean an irrational or unpredictable area or uh, idea or desire. 
uh, Caprice stresses lack of apparent motivation and suggests willfulness, as in, by sheer Caprice, she quit her job. Good for her. Whim, W-H-I-M, implies a fantastic, capricious turn of mind or inclination, as in, an odd antique that was bought on a whim. Vagary stresses the erratic, irresponsible character of the notion or desire, as in, he had been prone to strange vagaries. Uh, crotchet, which I think is what it is in this case, implies an eccentric opinion or preference, as in, a serious scientist equally known for his bizarre crotchets. I think uh, crotchety, that's, I mean, that's a word that I'm more used to. I, I'm assuming that that's similar to what this this context is. Anyway, uh, this is a French word from the Italian, capriccio, which means caprice or shudder, like I shudder at the thing, S-H-U-D-D-E-R, uh, perhaps from capo, which means head, uh, from the Latin caput, which means head, plus riccio, which means hedgehog, uh, okay, from the Latin ericius, and there's more at the word head and urchin. Wow. Lots of stuff that doesn't seem related. Next, we have capricious. This is an adjective from 1601, governed or characterized by caprice. Synonyms are impulsive and unpredictable. And then a synonym, another one, is inconstant. Uh, Capriciously is an adverb, and capriciousness is a noun. Next, we have Capricorn with a capital C, noun from the 14th century, one a southern zodiacal constellation between Sagittarius and Aquarius. 2A. Oh, actually, Capricorn. That is... I think we just passed... Yes, we are currently in the Aquarius uh, zodiac signs, but I think Capricorn was like a week and a half ago, give or take. We Let's see, what's the week? Give or t- Yeah, something like that. Um, so we just missed it. We just missed Capricorn being within the Capricorn zodiac sign time uh let's see from caper which means goat plus cornu which means horn uh so it's a goat with horns capricorn uh okay next is our last word caprification cap ri fi k shun noun from 1601 artificial pollination of figs that usually bear only pistillate flowers by hanging male flowering branches branches of the caprifig in the trees to facilitate pollen transfer by a fig wasp. Uh, wow, okay. Ca- this is from caprificare, which means to pollinate by caprification. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, this fig wasp, I actually just heard about this recently, that there's some sort of wasp that... I think they put their eggs in a fig or something, and then the the young wasp. I don't know. I'll have to learn more about it. But there was some something about figs or uh, wasps in figs and uh, something like that. Uh, yeah, that's that was a fun time. Okay, the, our words were capoletti, capper, capping, cappuccino, caprese, capric acid, capriccio. Caprice, Capricious, Capricorn, and Caprification. Uh, what do I want to pick? I think, um, let's see. What do I like? I don't really know. I'm not. Uh, let's just pick Capaletti. Uh, it's, it's, it's hat pasta. That's a good one as the word of the episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to this podcast called The Dictionary. It's the place where I read all the stuff. Uh, We are at the end of page 183. We are chugging right along. If you would be so nice, I would love it if you could write me a review and give me a rating on whatever platform you are using, preferably Apple, because it controls everything. Uh, And then, you know, just you can share this around and you can write me a message or an email uh, what, what is this? Uh, dictionarypod at gmail.com. I'm at dictionarypod on the Twitter and the Instagram and Facebook and all those links are in the show notes. Um, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. So today is February 1st. Yay. Happy February. 
there's no big holidays in the U.S., but in New Zealand, it is Nelson Anniversary. It is also Auckland Anniversary Day, so maybe those two cities were founded on the same day. In Mexico, it is Constitution Day of Mexico. That seems important. And in Chile, it is the start of the Tapati Festival. Uh, the Festival of Tapati. I'm not sure what Tapati is, but uh, that's that's a festival. Okay, the first word is caprifig. C-A-P-R-I-F-I-G. This is going to be related, I think, to the end of the last episode uh, where we talked about figs and getting pollinated. So this one is a noun from the 15th century. It is a wild fig of southern Europe and southwestern Asia used for caprification of the cultivated fig. Also, its fruit is just called caprifig. Uh, and then the scientific name is Thicus carica silvestris. Very good. Uh, let's see, this is from ba, 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 goat and fig, uh, caper and ficus, that means goat and fig, and there's more at the word fig. Okay, next we have caprine or caprine, adjective from the 15th century of relating to or being a goat, as in caprine serum, also as in the caprine family. So, you know, Cats are felines, dogs are canines, uh, uh, we are hum. no wait, why am I blanking, humans? Um, anyway, uh, cows are bovines, pigs are porcine, and then goats are caprine. Uh, there's a whole list of those things, I can't remember what they're called, but they we all got them. Next we have a capriole, this is a noun from 1594, one, a playful leap. Synonym is caper. Two is talking about a trained horse. A vertical leap with a backward kick of the hind legs at the height of the leap. So they leap up and then they kick with their back legs. Uh, and capriole is also an intransitive verb. This is from uh, Old Italian capriolo, which means roebuck. From Latin capriolis, which means goat or roebuck. Uh, from caper, which means he goat, akin to the Old English hypher, which means goat, from Greek kapros, which means wild boar. Okay, next is capri pants. Two words. This is a noun from 1952. Close fitting women's pants that end above the ankle. Uh, and then just also called capris. This is from Capri, Italy. Uh, which is probably where they started to wear these short pants called capri pants. And you can eat some caprizi salad while wearing your capri pants because they are both from Capri, Italy, right? I believe so. Uh, so yes, you must wear capri pants and eat caprizi salad. Next, we have cap rock. One word, noun from 1859. And we have the 2A definition for the word cap, which was way over there on that other page there. Okay, next we have caproic acid, two words, noun from 1830. Sorry, my mustache is getting long and I need, really, really need to shave it, but the hairs are sticking me in the nose and it's itching, making me itch, and it's really frustrating. Okay, this is a liquid fatty acid, C6H12O2, that is found as a gly glycerol ester in fats and oils or made synthetically and used in pharmaceuticals and flavorings. Okay, next we have uh, cap caprolactam. Caprolactam, noun from 1944. A white crystalline cyclic am amide, C6H11NO, used especially in making one type of nylon. Caprolactam. Uh, this is from caproic acid and lactone and amide. So that's where they got all those parts of the word. Next is caprylic acid. Two words, noun from 1845. A fatty acid, C8H16O2, in rancid odor, occurring in fats and oils and used especially in the synthesis of esters for perfumes. But I hope 
that when you make that perfume, it is not rancid anymore because nobody wants to wear that perfume. Uh, Okay, next is CAPS. Just CAPS, abbreviation for one, capitals, and two, capsule. Next we have capsaicin, C-A-P-S-A. Am I reading this? No, capsaicin. Huh, capsaicin. I read that wrong. Uh, C-A-P-S-A-I-C-I-N, capsaicin, noun from circa 1890, a colorless irritant phenolic amide, C18H27NO3, found in various capsicums that gives hot peppers their hotness and that is used in topical creams for its analgesic properties. Uh, And this is just from the new Latin word capsicum. So, I always thought that I had heard it called capsaicin, but maybe that's a different word that we'll get to later. I don't know, maybe not. Um, or we've just I've just been pronouncing it wrong, capsaicin. Okay, interesting. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's hot. It, it's what gives hot peppers their hotness. Uh, it's even in some, like, beers and drinks. Uh, we, that's where I actually think I first heard the word capsaicin, uh, because there was some in a, a hot, a hot, uh, spicy uh, beer. And, uh, that was crazy. Okay. We are moving on to capsian, capsian with a capital C adjective from 1915 of, or relating to a paleolithic culture of Northern Africa and Southern U- Europe. Um, this is from... The Latin uh, Kapsa, which is uh, Gafsa Tunisia. So I'm not sure, is it Gapsa Kapsa Tunisia or is Kapsa just the name of Gafsa Tunisia, the Latin name for it? I'm not sure. Uh, but yes, in that region, uh, you, you would be Capsian. Okay, next is Capsicum. Uh, this is a noun from 1588, 1A any of a genus of tropical American herbs and shrubs of the nightshade family, widely cultivated for their many-seeded, usually fleshy-walled berries, called also just pepper. It's, it's, their peppers are capsicums. Uh, yes, the genus name is capsicum. Uh, and then we have one B, just the three B definition for the word pepper. Two, an oleoresin derived from the fruit of some capsicums that contains capsaicin, see, I now I said it correctly, capsaicin, uh, and related compounds and is used medicinally, especially as a topical pain reliever. Peppers are capsicums, and they have capsaicin, capsaicin. Next is capsid, noun from 1959, the protein shell of a virus particle surrounding its nucleic acid. Clearly. Next is capsize. Uh, Verb from 1778, starting with transitive, to cause to overturn, as in capsize a canoe. I talked about that when I read the word canoe uh, a little bit. And then we have intransitive, to become upset or overturn, overturned with an ED. And then the synonym is turnover, as in the canoe capsized. Yes, I am capsizing a canoe and then the canoe will be capsized capsize is also a noun this is perhaps from the spanish word capusar or the catalonian word cabusar which means to thrust the head underwater so it it really means to thrust or sorry to thrust underwater but then typically it would be somebody's head going underwater so that's where we get the word capsize uh who knew who knew we couldn't say capusar or cabusar, so we just turned it into capsize. But it's the idea of just putting your head underwater. I'm capsized. Okay, next we have our last word. It is cap sleeve. Two words, noun from 1926. A very short sleeve that hangs over the edge of the shoulder without extending along the underside of the arm. So it's just a sleeve for your shoulder. Um, and the example is just on a dress. So if you got those, it's a it's just a, called a cap sleeve. It's just a little sleeve, just the top of it. Uh, okay, so we had capra fig, caprine, capriole, 
Uh, that is uh, about boars and horses. Uh, Capri pants, cap rock, caproic acid, caprolactam, caprylic acid, caps, capsaicin, capsian, capsicum, capsid, capsize, caps leave. I think I'm going to pick capsaicin. Capsaicin is what gives peppers their hotness. I wanted to call it capsaicin because I didn't know there was an I in capsaicin. But if you like hot stuff, you like capsaicin. I like hot stuff, so I like capsaicin. Wow, I don't know what's going on there. Okay, Uh, we have finished page 183. And uh, tomorrow we will move on to page 184, which will be February 2nd, I think is Groundhog Day. We'll find out later. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to the Dictionary. Uh, Today is February 2, number 2. And so we are transitioning from the very bottom of page 183 onto the top of page 184. And uh, some holidays. Some of you probably already know this off the top of your head. It is Groundhog Day in the U.S. Uh, I guess it's also Groundhog Day in other parts of the world, uh, which I doesn't this this website is not telling me what what parts of the world celebrate it, uh, but I guess there's a International Groundhog Day uh, in Estonia. It is the anniversary of the Tartu Peace Treaty, so that's good because that is a peace, more peace. We need more peace. Thank you. Uh, in India, it is World Wetland Day, so that's probably all about protecting the wetlands of India uh, all over the world, actually. And then in Colombia, it is National Indigenous Day. So that seems like it's celebrating the indigenous people of Colombia and possibly other parts of the world, too. I love it all. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. What is that from? I can't think of it. Okay. First word is capstan or capstan. C-A-P-S-T-A-N. Stan is wearing a cap. This is a noun from the 14th century. One a machine for moving or raising heavy weights that consists of a vertical page flip, a vertical drum which can be rotated and around which cable is turned. So cable is turned around this thing that raises heavy weights. Um, I guess, I wonder if this is uh, like a part, it says it is a machine, um, but yeah, I, I'm thinking of a... Uh, just a just a machine that you would work out on at the gym. Okay, next uh, is the oh we have the number two, a rotating shaft that drives tape at a constant speed in a recorder. The capstan. You can thank the capstan for making sure that the tape goes at a constant speed. Next we have capstone, noun from the 14th century. One, a coping stone, and then the synonym is just coping. Two, the high point crowning achievement as in the capstone of her career it's like i'm sure this comes from something specific but um you know there that it probably comes from literally putting the stone on the cap of something um and it just turned into what we know of it as but i'm really curious to know what that uh old uh, what that original uh, thing was it's it's a it, so it, the, so the number one is a coping stone um and maybe just that turned into capping stone or cap stone. I'm not sure, uh, but I'm so curious. When I think of a coping stone, I think of like, oh, this is the stone that I hold to cope with things that are bothering me, but I'm sure that that's not it. Uh, so there's there's a lot more information than the dictionary is telling us. We got to go to the encyclopedia to get more. All right, next we have capsular adjective from 1708, one of relating to or resembling a capsule there are going to be a lot of capsule words or just a few uh and then number two the synonym is capsulated okay so that is actually our next word capsulated adjective from 1646 enclosed in a capsule uh so you know when the uh the 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 astronauts are coming back to earth and they're falling down in that little capsule they are capsulated they're also capsular Okay, so here we go with the word capsule. Uh, This is the first form. It is a noun from circa 1693. There's a number of different kinds of capsules. Let me tell you to them. Let me tell you to them? Let me tell you about them. 1A, a membrane or sac enclosing a body part. 
as a knee joint or kidney. So there's a uh, so is the knee joint a capsule or is the capsule is there a capsule in the knee joint? Is the kidney considered a capsule? I mean, it kind of looks like a capsule. One B either of two layers of white matter in the cerebrum. I think that's in the brain. Two. A closed receptacle containing spores or seeds as 2A, a dry dehiscent, D-E-H-I-S-C-E-N-T. The word scent is in there, so I wonder if that has to do with smell. Anyway, a dry dehiscent, usually many-seeded fruit composed of two or more carpels. We'll get to carpels later. 2B, the spore case of a moss. 3 a shell usually of gelatin for packing something as a drug or vitamins. This is the capsule I think that most of us think of when we think about, you know, vitamins and taking things. It's in a capsule. Uh, also, a usually medicinal or nutritional preparation for oral use consisting of the shell and its contents. I've seen some time-lapse videos where somebody puts these capsules in water, just like a tray of water, and then you just watch it dissolve, and it is very cool and lots of swirly colors. Four, an often polysaccharide envelope surrounding a microorganism. That's a capsule. Five, an extremely brief conden condensation. An extremely brief condensation. Uh, and then when I think of condensation, I just think of water on, on the thing, but I don't think that's what this is. Uh, because the synonyms are outline and survey. All right, next is 6A, a compact, often sealed, and detachable container or compartment. 6B, a small pressurized compartment or vehicle as for spaceflight. Yes, that was the example I gave before. It's a tiny little capsule. I've uh, I've seen one in person or a, um, I don't know if it was an actual one or if it was a, a recreation of one at a museum, the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. And uh, I, this, it's very small, tight quarters. I don't know if I would want to stay in one of those for too long. The etymology of capsule is from the Latin capsula, which is the diminutive of capsa, which means box. And there's more at the word case. So yeah, it's just a box. It's just a thing. Okay, next we have the second form of capsule. This is a transitive verb from 1859. One, to equip with or enclose in a capsule. Two, to condense into or devise into a compact form. Ah, so that is related to the number five definition that we read before, an extremely brief condensation. So it's not condensation of water, it's something literally being condensed into a uh, more manageable piece of information. So you're taking lots of information and you're condensing it down. You're capsulizing it. Uh, yes. Okay. Now we have the third form of capsule. This is an adjective from 1938. One, extremely brief. This book and podcast are not uh, a capsule. They're not capsulated. Uh, number two, small and very compact. All right. Next we have capsulize verb transitive verb from 1945 and the synonym is just capsule so you can you can capsule something you can capsulize something you put it all into a little box and you will be a capsulator i don't know i just made up that word uh, because i'm not seeing that anywhere here okay next we have an abbreviation capital c a p t it is an abbreviation for captain and that is our next word. Surprise, surprise. Lots of definitions. Uh, first form, noun from up, 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 uh, the 14th century. 1A1, a military leader, the commander of a unit or a body of troops. 1A2, a subordinate officer commanding under a sovereign or general. 1A, I don't know what I said before. It should have said, I should have said 1A2. I think I did. Next we have 1A3. A commissioned officer in the Army, Air Force, or Marine Corps ranking above a first lieutenant and below a major. I think I've said this before. I will never, I will never remember the order of these things. Lieutenant, major, captain, general, pawn, knight, rook. We just watched the uh, the Queen's Gambit. It's very good. Uh, I, 
I guess there was a lot of hype going into it, or there was a lot of hype going into it, and I think I just maybe just had different expectations. I really hate watching things when there's a lot of hype around them, uh, because I'm always disappointed, and I don't want to be disappointed about things that are really good, and it is really good. You should go watch it. Um, Okay, now we have 1B1, a naval officer who is master or commander of a ship. 1B2, a commissioned officer in the Navy, ranking above a commander and below a commodore, and in the Coast Guard, ranking above a commander and below a rear admiral. Sorry, I mixed up the lines in my brain. Uh, This is another reason why I can't remember all of these rankings, because depending on the context of what you're talking about, there might be different words, different names. Uh, So yeah, you you can't be expected to keep track of all this stuff. Okay, next we have 1C. Yeah, we're still in the ones. Uh, 1C, a senior pilot who commands the crew of an airplane. This is your captain now. We are flying over the seas. And if you look out the left window, that is uh, to the south, you will see that we are now on 1D. An officer in a police department or fire department in charge of a unit as a precinct or company and usually ranking above a lieutenant and below a chief. Number two, we're on the twos. One who leads or supervises as 2A, a leader of a sports team or side. I was never the captain of a team. I always got picked last or near the end. I I don't think I ever got picked to be captain. Because why why would you? I'm not a leader. I'm a reader. Moving on to 2B, synonym is head waiter. That's all one word, head waiter. Uh, 2C, a head waiter I think ranks above the dumb waiter. 2C, a person in charge of hotel bellhops, called also bell captain. Uh, 3, a person of importance or influence in a field, as in captains of industry. Uh, Captain C, Captain C is a noun, and captainship is also a noun. That's a funny one because there can be a captain of a ship, but then there's also the captain ship. The captain ship on the ship is the captain. I don't know. Uh, let's see. This is from uh, the Latin capitanius, uh, which is uh, it means chief. From uh, oh, also caput, the Latin caput, which we've read before, uh, is uh, it means head. So yeah, we've seen that a lot. And there's more at the head. So yeah, the, the captain. That word totally makes sense when you take this back to Latin. Caput, captain. It's the head, the, the 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 captain, the leader. Okay, second form of captain is a transitive verb from 1598, to be captain of. Synonym is lead, uh, as in captained the football team. Uh, that that example reminded me of. I just rewatched Wally, a uh, great movie, and the uh, the the AI robot who assists the captain. At one point, just in his very electronic voice, says, Captain, Captain. I can't do it, obviously. But uh, I don't know. I just, I can hear that in my head. Uh, Next is Captain's Chair. Two words, noun from 1946. An armchair with a saddle seat and a low curved back with a vertical, with vertical spindles. Oh, there, look, there's a picture of a captain's chair. You've seen it. You may or may not know it's called a captain's chair. It's you've it's just a normal chair. There's uh, spindles that go kind of all around the seat, and then there's a an additional back piece in the back. Uh, maybe I'll post a picture if you're nice. Next, we have captain's mast. Two words, noun from 1941, and we have the number three definition for the word mast. So there's lots of different kinds of masts, and one of them is a captain's mast. And then our last word for this episode is captain. C-A-P-T-A-N, Captain, noun from 1952. A fungicide, get ready for lots of letters and numbers, C9H8, C, I think it's C-L-3, N-O-2-S, used on agricultural crops. A fungicide used on agricultural crops. Uh, this is short for Mercaptan. Uh, there's just an M-E-R at the beginning, and they shortened it to Captan. 
uh, why there was no singing in this episode. Maybe we should remedy that. Okay, so we had capstan, uh, capstone, capsular, capsulated, capsule, capsulize, uh, capped, captain, captain's chair, captain's mast, and captain. Um, there is a They Might Be Giants song that is, why am I blanking? Um, all I can think of is I'm the Captain Now from that movie. Um, and it's, oh, that's why, because they actually, uh, it's Capum, Cap, yeah, the Capum, C-A-P apostrophe M. Um, I'm trying to think of how it goes off the top of my head. And because I'm the cat. Mm. Yeah, anyway. Um, should I do another little song? Probably not. I don't think any of you really care about that. Uh, I think you, I think I'm losing listeners because of all this singing. Um, I'm the captain and I'm going to lead this podcast to the awesome stuff where you get to learn all the things and I'm, I'm the captain of this ship okay i'm gonna end this episode now thank you very much for listening and until next time this is spencer dispensing information goodbye hello word nerds welcome to the dictionary uh regarding my song in the last episode i went ahead and listened to a little bit of it so i could be reminded of how it went and it's something like this look me over i'm the cat mm. He doesn't actually say captain, he says captain, but there's no M in captain, so why is there an M in there? Anyway, uh, February 3rd is today, it is uh, in the US, it is World Read Aloud Day. Well, look at that, I am celebrating by reading aloud this book to you. Uh, Every day is World Read Aloud Day for me, Um, and then it is also National Signing Day. Well, so I'm clicking on the link because this could mean so many different things. Uh, Let's see. It is uh, marks the start of the college football signing season. So it's college people signing to different college sports teams. Um, And then worldwide in Mozambique. You don't hear a lot about Mozambique. Not I don't. Um, It is Mozambican Heroes Day. So, yes, let's go celebrate some Mozambican heroes. Okay, the first word is caption. C-A-P-T-I-O-N, noun from circa 1670. One, the part of a legal document that shows where, when, and by what authority it was taken, found, or executed. 2A, the heading, especially of an article or document, and a synonym is title. 2B, the explanatory comment or designation accompanying a pictorial illustration. Oh, I love the cat. Do you have you ever looked at the uh, the New York, is it the New York Times cross? No. Oh boy, the New York Times cartoon caption contest. That was a mouthful. Uh, they uh, they they post some videos of uh, celebrities, comedians, actors, whoever uh, trying to play this game, and uh, they often come up with some pretty good stuff. Um, I am no good at coming up with captions for those, but I do very much enjoy hearing what people got to say. Uh, okay, so that was that, and now we have 2C, a motion picture subtitle. We have been basically watching everything with the captions when we can, because even though we can hear it, if they're, if it's in, like, British or Irish, sometimes their accents can be pretty heavy, so that definitely helps. Um, but also, you, you actually get a lot more out of it than you probably would think you would. Um, uh, you, you might miss a word that is maybe semi-important. Uh, sometimes there's words in the background, maybe on the radio or TV, and uh, that can be sometimes kind of important. So I definitely recommend watching things with the captions on. Captionless is an adjective. I guess you can't really say caption full because if it's captioned, that already means that. So there are no captions on this thing. It is captionless. So this is probably short for certificate of caption. Uh, which then in parentheses, it says taking and then comma seizure, uh, certificate of caption. Okay, that's probably more about the number one definition. Moving on to the second form of caption, transitive verb from 1848, to furnish with a caption. Uh, yep. Next is captious, C-A-P-T-I-O-U-S, adjective from the 14th century. One, marked by an often ill-natured inclination to stress faults and raise objections. 
as in captious critics, marked by an often ill-natured inclination to stress faults. Uh, yes, critics are definitely doing that. Number two, calculated to confuse, entrap, or entangle in argument, as in a captious question. Hmm. Uh, so another synonym is the word critical. Yes, you're being very critical when you're captious. Captiously is an adverb. Captiousness is a noun. And uh, let's see, this is from the Latin captio, which means deception or verbal quibble, from capere, which means to take. And there's more at the word heave, H-E-A-V-E. Next, we have captivate, verb from circa 1555. Looks like it's only transitive. One is archaic. Synonyms are seize and capture. I have captivated you with my with my words. I don't know. Uh, number two, to influence and dominate by some special charm, art, or trait, and with an irresistible appeal. Uh, then another synonym is the word attract. Okay, next we have, oh, captivation is a noun, and captivator is also a noun. A captivator is using their captivation skills to captivate you. Uh, next we have captive. They are cap they are captivating the captive. Uh, this is an adjective from the 14th century. 1A, taken and held as or as if a prisoner of war. 1B1, kept within bounds. Synonym is confined. 1B2, of or relating to captive animals. As in, captive breeding. That is the breeding that is happening when they are captive, but they, if they are in the wild, it is just regular breeding. Two, held under control of another, but having the appearance of independence. Especially, owned or controlled by another concern and operated for its needs rather than for an open market, as in a captive mine. Like, is that the mine that you go digging for coal and diamonds and stuff? Uh, number three, being such involuntarily, being such involuntarily because of a situation that makes free choice or departure difficult, as in a captive audience. Wow, I don't know. Some sometimes these definitions just seem unnecessarily uh, extravagant or something. I'm sure it's not, but my brain is a uh, a little slow. Uh, I hope that you are a captive audience listening to me teach you these things. Uh, and then just captive is a noun. And I don't think there's any etymology I want to say to you, so we are going to move on to captivity. Noun from the 14th century. One, the state of being captive, as in some birds thrive in captivity. W why, why is that? Is that because when they're in the wild, there's a higher chance that they would get eaten by something or uh, get some illness from being outside, and that's why they thrive. They have a longer lifespan. Um, you know, I, I think depending on the species, sometimes they're good in captivity, even though they probably shouldn't be there. They live longer. They get health. They get health insurance. They get uh, medical care. Uh, but yeah, sometimes sometimes they don't. Sometimes they don't live as long. Um, yeah, that's that's a, that's a whole thing. Okay, number two is obsolete. It is a group of captives. A captivity is a group of captives, people who have been captivated by somebody in some way. Okay, next we have captopril, C-A-P-T-O-P-R-I-L, captopril, noun from 1978, one, no, no one, an antihypertensive drug, C9H15NO3S, that is an ACE inhibitor, ACE is all caps, A-C-E. Uh, and this is from mercaptan plus O plus proline plus ill. Um, yeah, so they just combine a bunch of things that mean something to somebody but not to me. Okay, next we have captor, C-A-P-T-O-R. It's like raptor. I want to see you... I don't know. I have this envision in my head in my head about a raptor being a captor. Ooh, maybe there's a song. Raptor captor. 
I want to be your raptor captor, baby. I want to be your raptor cat. I don't know what that means, but it's a song uh, with two words that rhyme. And it's a raptor that captor captivates people. A raptivate. No, this is going on way too long. This is a noun from circa 1688. One that has captured a person or thing. Yes, raptors can definitely be a captor. Okay, next we have the first form of the word capture. So a captor captures people by captivating them, and then they are captives. Uh, this is a noun from circa 1542. One, an act or instance of capturing as 1A, an act of catching, winning, or gaining control by force, stratagem, or guile. I gotta use all those things. 1B. A move in a board game, as chess or checkers, that gains an opponent's piece. You have you have captured my rook. 1C. The absorption by an atom, nucleus, or particle of a subatomic particle that often results in subsequent emission of radiation or in fission. Uh, yes, that's... That's a thing that happens. Uh, results in subsequent emission. Uh, yeah, well, if you don't know, when you when you release a, a particle or something, uh, that is radiation. That's where that's how radiation happens. Um, I don't know. That's that's all I'm taking from that. One uh, D, the act of recording in a permanent file, as in data capture. Two, one that has been taken as a prize ship. I have taken this ship, and it is very prized, so it is my capture. Uh, next is the second form of capture. It is a verb from 1574. We are starting with transitive, and I think, yes, it must only be transitive because I don't think there would be an intransitive way to use this word capture uh, that I can think of. So, number one, A, to take captive. Also, to gain control of, especially by force, as in, capture a city. 1B, to gain or win, especially through effort, as in, captured 60% of the vote. I hope that's enough for you to win. 2A, to emphasize, represent, or preserve, as a scene, mood, or quality. Oh, wait, there's more. To emphasize, represent, or preserve in a more or less permanent form, as in, at any such moment as a photograph might capture. At any such moment as a photograph might capture. That is a quote from C.E. Montague. People back in the day spoke and wrote very differently than we do now. I would never think to write something like that. I'm also just not a good writer in general. But anyway, another example is a scene, a mood, or example. That is what can be captured uh, in a more or less permanent form. Next is 2B, to record in a permanent file, as in a computer. 3, to captivate and hold the interest of. That is why my episodes are fairly short, because I want you to be captured, and then you can move on to something else nearby, soon, soonly, soonly. Yes, within 15 minutes, you should be able to go and do something else. Okay, number 4, to take according to the rules of a game. 5, to bring about the capture of, uh, and a subatomic particle is an example. And then a synonym is the word catch. Next is capture the flag. Three words, noun from circa 1925. A game in which captures, nope, a game in which players on each of two teams seek to capture the other team's flag and return it to their side without being captured and imprisoned. I've, I've played this a few times. I never felt very good at it. I was very stressed out about how to do this because I always knew that there were people better than me. So it was, it was a very stressful time. Uh, next and last word for this episode is capuche or capuche. C-A-P-U-C-H-E. Capuche. Noun from uh, circa 1600. Uh, it just means a hood. That's the synonym, hood. Especially the cowl of a capuchin friar. Uh, so we are actually going to learn about capuchin in the next episode, but uh, uh, maybe it's a location or something, and there are friars, and they wear a cowl or a hood, and that is called a capuche. 
This is from the Italian cappuccio, which is from cappa, which means cloak. And that is good for that. So we had caption. Oh, you know what? I don't think I actually picked a word of the episode in the last episode, did I? No, I don't think I did. Uh, Well, let's see. Let's look at those real quick. We'll do two words of the episode for this one. Uh, Maybe I just want to pick capstone as the word of the episode because I'm curious about where that came from. Okay, so in today's episode, we had caption, captious, captivate, captive, captivity, captopril, uh, captor, capture, capture the flag, and capuche. Uh, Well, maybe I shall pick captivate as the word of the episode because I... I don't know why. I don't know. I just picked it. Okay, thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Thank you for turning on this podcast. I hope that you are telling people about it. Today is February 4th. It is World Cancer Day in the U.S. and other parts of the world. So that is a very huge holiday. Uh, You know, they've made a lot of strides in dealing with cancer over the decades, but we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, Some things that you can do that might help is eat right and exercise and meditate. Uh, And it is also Lifeguard Day in Argentina. So you got to go celebrate your lifeguards. They are there to save your life and guard it with their life, possibly, maybe, I don't know. Okay, the first word is, uh, well, I normally would have said capuchin, C-A-P-U-C-H-I-N, but the etymology, no, the uh, pronunciation guide is saying, I have to read and speak at the same time, especially for three also. Okay, um, so it is, it can be copyshin, uh could also be capuchin or capuchin. So there's no, the CH is not actually a CH, a CH sound, it's an SH. Uh, so I'll just say capuchin, because that's the most similar to what my brain wants to say anyway. So we have number one, uh, oh, this would be capitalized, a member of the Order of Friars Minor Capuchin, Capuchin, forming since 1529 an austere branch of the First Order of St. Francis of Assisi, engaged in missionary work and preaching. Uh, by the way, a lot of those words were capitalized. Order of Friars Minor Capuchin. Uh, other than the of, all of those were capitalized. Uh, so this is uh, some group of people. They're friars. Uh, and that is related to the last word in the last episode, which was the friars uh, hood. Capuche. Uh, number two, a hooded cloak for women. So the friars get to wear a capuche, and then the women wear a capuchin. Uh, number three, any of a genus of Southern and Central American monkeys, especially one with the hair on its crown resembling a monk's cowl. Ah, so that's why it, oh, that's where it got its name. Uh, the genus name is uh, Cebus. I'm going to say that's how it's pronounced, C-E-B-U-S. And the scientific name of this one is Cebus capucinus, capucinus. Uh, so yeah, if you if you know what a cap- capuchin monkey capuchin monkey looks like, which of course if you saw the show Friends, you saw one there a fair amount. Uh, but yeah, they're a very standard uh, trained monkey that gets used for uh, shows a lot, shows and, and movies. Um, they're very smart and they get used. Oh, and they also are used a lot to help people with uh, physical disabilities. So they can um, they can get things, they can open things, they can help out a lot. Uh, so they're very smart, and I would love one, but you got to be careful because, well, A, I don't need one. I don't need help right now. But if I ever was disabled in some way, I would definitely want one. But, you know, you got to wear a diaper, and you got to clean their stuff, and they can be mean, and they probably want to throw their poop sometimes, and that's not good. Uh, maybe they should just be left in the wild, but they can help people sometimes. Okay. Oh, and I will probably post a picture of a capuchin monkey so you can maybe compare to this cloak hood thing, cowl, and you can see how it compares. Next is Capulet with a capital C, noun from 1592, the family of Juliet in Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. 
and I guess uh, it's so important that it had to get its own entry in the dictionary. Next is capybara, uh, C-A-P-Y-B-A-R-A, noun from 1774, a tailless, semi-aquatic, southern and central American rodent, often exceeding four feet in length, and that is 1.2 meters. And uh, I have heard that these are the largest rodents in the world, and they're very cute, and they seem very chill, and uh, recently a lot of uh, videos and photos have been posted online of them just hanging out, uh, chilling with people. Maybe they're chilling in water, in near a waterfall. They just seem very cool and chill, and I like them. And the scientific name is Hydrocheris. Hydrocheris. Oh, it's spelled slightly differently, but it's basically the same thing. Hydrocherus with a U-S and Hydrocheris with an I-S. That's a fun name. So this is from the Patagonian, no, Portuguese word, uh, capybara or capivara, which is an alternative of capiu, capiwara, which is from the Tupi word, capiwara, which is from capii, which means grass or bush, plus wara, which means eater. So they are the eater of uh, the brush and the grass. That's how they got their name. It's just, that's what it means. Capybara means uh, grass eater. Okay, we are moving. Oh, and there's a picture of a capybara, and I will post a picture of a capybara on the Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, so you can see it if you want. Next, we have the word car. It's just C-A-R. Uh, this is, let's see, you could say car, you could say core, you could say kiar. Yeah, kiar. I'm going to start calling cars kiars. Let's go ride in the kiar. Uh, this is a noun from the 14th century. One, a vehicle moving on wheels as 1A, which is archaic, the synonyms carriage and chariot. They used to call those cars. Uh, 1B, a vehicle designed to move on rails as of a railroad. Yes, you've heard of train cars, train cars. 1C, the synonym automobile. 2, the passenger compartment of an elevator. 3, the part of an airship or balloon that carries the passengers and cargo. Maybe cargo and car are related. Um, This is from Middle English carre which is from, let's see, Latin, cara, which is the plural of carum, which is an alternative of carus, which is of Celtic origin, akin to the Old Irish and Middle Welsh car, C-A-R-R, which means vehicle, akin to the Latin currere, which means to run. So a vehicle runs very quickly, like the Flintstones. They use their feet to make the cargo. Cargo, ah, see, cargo. Uh, Okay, moving on to C-A-R, all caps, abbreviation for Civil Air Regulations. Next is, all right, so now we're getting to the section, or pretty close, where there's a bunch of words that are kind of hard to pronounce because they're not familiar to me, and they might have multiple pronunciations, but anyway. So this is uh, Carabao, Carabao, Cara, yeah, C-A-R-A-B-A-O, Carabao. This is a noun from 1900. Synonym is just water buffalo, carabao. Uh, This is from, uh, I think, what is that saying? Filipino Spanish? Something like that. Uh, From the Visayan of Samar and Leyte. I think those are all languages or locations. Uh, Carabao, K-A-R-A-B-A-W. So that is the original word. Uh, and then we I- here in English changed it, changed the spelling, possibly the pronunciation. It's just a water buffalo. Next is carabed or uh, carabed. Uh, this is a noun from 1880. Synonym is ground beetle, a carabid. And this is from Greek car- carabos, which is a horned beetle. So yeah, they're they're probably similar beetles. Next is uh, okay, so uh, I would have said this is carabiner, carab, let's see, it says carabiner, carabiner, or carabiner, C-A-R-A-B-I-N-E-E-R, or N-I-E-R, carabiner. 
Noun from 1672. A cavalry soldier armed with a carbine. A carbine? When are we going to get to carbine? Probably in two episodes. Uh, So it's a cavalry soldier with a carbine. A carabineer. And this is from... It's just from carbine, obviously. So next we have carabiner. Uh, this, it, or carabiner, uh, let's see, at the, it's, it's spelled very similarly to the last one, but instead of double E, it's a single E at the end, or you can spell it with a K. Carabiner, noun, from 1920, an oblong metal ring with one spring-hinged side that is used especially in mountain climbing as a connector and to hold a freely running rope. I, uh, I have a carabiner as a keychain for a keychain, uh, but I have never used it in the way that it was meant to be used, which I think most people who have carabiners also don't use them for uh, mountain climbing of any kind. I think it would be fun. I would very much like to go mountain climbing because I have no idea how these things are used, how you wrangle up all those ropes and cables and things, but I find it fascinating and I think that would be fun. So this is from German Carabiner with a capital K, which is short for Carabiner Hocken. Carabiner Hocken, yes. Uh, that literally means Carabiner's Hook. So that's what it is. Next we have Carabiner, Carabinero or Carabinero. Uh, this is a noun from 1845. One, a member of a Spanish national police force serving especially as frontier guards. Two, a customs or coast guard officer in the Philippines. Carabinero. Uh, This is Spanish from Carabina, which means carbine. Uh, So that is how that is connected. Next is Carabiniere or Carabiniere. Noun from 1847. I'm going to assume that this related to the last one, but let's find out. A member of the Italian National Police Force. So in some ways, yes, it's very. It, they're both police forces. One of them is Spanish. One of them is Italian, and they just change the pronunciation of it. Uh, carabiniere, carabinero. Okay, next we have caracol, or just caracol. C-A-R-A-C-A-L. C-A-R-A-C-A-L, and that pronounces caracal. Noun from 1760, a long-legged reddish-brown nocturnal cat uh, of savannas in Africa and parts of Asia that has long pointed ears with a tuft of black hairs at the tip. We will post a picture of this caracal. And this is for, oh, the scientific name is... Phyllis Caracal, and also a lynx caracal. I've heard of a lynx. I have heard of a caracal, but I I can I can imagine a lynx better in my mind. Is a lynx a caracal, or is a caracal a lynx, or is a how does that work? I don't know. Um, and then this is from the Turkish karakulak, which is from kara, which means black, plus kulak, which means ear. So they got black ears. That is how you can remember what they kind of look like. Uh, And then we have our last word. It is uh, caracara or caracara. C-A-R-A-C-A-R-A. Caracara or caracara. Noun from 1838. Any of various large, long-legged hawks found from the southern U.S. to the southern to South America that are classified with the falcons. Caracara. Spanish, caracara. From Portuguese, caracara. From the Tupi word, caracara. With Ks. That's what I got to say to you. So we had capuchin, capulet, capybara, car, C A R, carabao, carabid, carabineer, carabiner, carabinero, carabiniere. Caracal, Caracara. Well, a lot of these I'm going to put on Instagram. I am very much delayed on my Instagram posting. Um, So I think I might just pick car as the word of the episode um, because they are very useful 
and lots of things can be called cars, and I can say something like, uh, there are lots of different ways to pronounce the word car. You can say car, or you can say core, and you can even say the fun one, car. Kiar mighty. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Please rate and review on Apple Podcasts if you can and any other place that you might be listening to this on. I would sure would love a review. They make me feel happy. Uh, get those dopamines going. Um, and then, yeah, just uh, let the people know about this podcast. That would be great. Um, and then you can send me a message. If you like, you can check out my social media for, for photos and sometimes funny captions. If you need a little entertainment, uh, yes, here we go. There's a bunch of words. Uh, some of these words I'm not familiar with as usual. So let's go with the first one, which is caracol, C-A-R-A-C-O-L-E, caracol. Uh, this is a noun from 1614, a half turn to right or left, executed by a mounted horse. So they actually have a name for when a horse that somebody is on turns halfway to the left or the right? Okay, a caracol. A caracol is also a verb. So this is uh, French from the Spanish caracol, which is uh, it means snail or spiral stair or just caracol. Uh, so I definitely see the connection, but it's, it's a very interesting. Okay, next we have caracal, C-A-R-A-C-U-L. Uh, this is a noun from 1894. The pelt of a caracal lamb. Hmm, I don't like that. Uh, the pelt of a caracal lamb after the curl begins to loosen. Uh, yeah, they probably don't have to kill it, which is good. Uh, they probably shave it. Uh, but yeah, it's so... It's they changed the spelling because the caracal lamb has K's and this one has C's. I don't know. Okay, next is carafe. You could say carafe or you could say carafe if you want to sound a little bit fancier. Carafe. Uh, this is a noun from 1767. One, a bottle with a flaring lip used to hold beverages and especially wine. Two, a usually glass container used to hold and serve coffee. This is a French word from the Italian word carafa with two Fs from the, I think this is Argentinian. Let's double check that. Uh, no, it is Arabic. I don't know why I had a blank on that. Um, yeah, because isn't Argentina, they speak, uh, is it Portuguese, Spanish, some form of that? Um, okay, uh, so it, this is from the Arabic word Garafa, G-H-A-R-R-A-F-A, with a horizontal line over the uh, the middle A, Garafa. Okay, next we have Carambola, Carambola, noun from 1598. One, a five-angled green to yellow tropical fruit of star-shaped cross-section, called also starfruit. I've heard of starfruit. We can post a picture, but it is also called carambola. Carambola. I just like to say carambola. Two, a tropical tree of the wood sorrel family that is native to south southeastern Asia and is widely cultivated for carambolas. And the scientific name is Averroa carambola. Averroa, I can't even say it. Averroa carambola. This is a Portuguese word from Marathi, carambal, from Sanskrit, caramfala, caramfala. It's just, just a star fruit. Okay, next we have, ooh, so this one, in our household, we have had discussions about this word and how to pronounce it. Uh, so most people say caramel. It's just caramel. Um, but some people, like my wife, say Caramel. She feels very strongly that you have to say caramel. Uh, and then there's also just caramel. 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 It is spelled C-A-R-A-M-E-L. So yeah, she feels strongly because there is that extra A in there. 
Um, I don't know if there is a word. Let's take a quick look. Let's look at this other page. Carmel. No, there is no word in this book that is just C-A-R-M-E-L, even though sometimes uh, they might spell it that way. It is caramel. So in this household, we say caramel. Uh, this is a noun from uh, 1653. One, an amorphous, brittle, brown, and somewhat bitter substance obtained by heating sugar and used as a coloring and flavoring agent. Uh, I didn't. I wouldn't have called it somewhat bitter. I never thought about it being bitter. Um, I like that it is amorphous and brittle. Uh, number two, a firm, chewy, usually caramel-flavored candy. This is French, from the Spanish caramelo, from Portuguese, uh, probably the same word or a similar word, which means icicle or caramel, uh, from the Latin calamelis, which means small reed, and there's more at the word shawm, S-H-A-W-M, no clue why, caramel. Okay, so next we have caramelize with an S-E. That is the British variation of caramelize with a Z-E. But see, but how do you say it? Do you say caramelize or do you say caramelize? It's such a mouthful to say that. You could say it however you want. I want you to be happy. So caramelize is a verb from 1842. We have one transitive definition and one intransitive definition, starting with transitive to change into caramel. Uh, And then the example is sugar. So change sugar into caramel. And then the intransitive, to change to caramel. To change... So the first one is to... to, Really? To change into caramel. And then the other one is to change to caramel. So the first one is where you are doing the changing, you are making the change happen. And the other thing, the other, the intransitive is... You are the caramel, and you are being changed, or you are the thing that is being changed into caramel, I think. Yes. Okay. Next, we have Karangid, or Karangid. It's uh, spelled C-A-R-A-N-G-I-D, and you can use the J or the G sound. Either way is totally fine. Karangid, Karangid. Adjective from 1931 of or relating to a large family of marine spiny fin bony fishes including important food fishes and karangid or karangid it is also a noun this is from the french karange karange which means shad or horse mackerel and then from the spanish karanga next we have carapace or carapace a uh, noun from 1836, one, a bony or chitinous case or shield covering the back or part of the back of an animal. Let me read that again. A bony or chitinous case or shield covering the back or part of the back of an animal. Examples are a turtle or a crab. Uh, chitinous, I think it's the chitins, chitins, something like that. Uh, it's just a, it's just a material, an organic material. Uh, that one can grow. I wonder if our nails are chitinous. Um, and uh, yeah, so that is so the shell of a turtle is a carapace. Number two, a protective, decorative, or disguising shell, as in the carapace of reserve he built around himself. That is a quote from M. M. Mintz, M. I. N. T. Z. His initials or her initials are M. 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 The carapace of reserve he built around himself. Next, oh, and then this is from this. This is French from the Spanish carapacho. Next is carrot, C A R A T. This first form is a version of carrot with a K. And now we have the second form of carrot with a C. Noun from 1555, a unit of weight for precious stones equal to 200 milligrams. So this this form of it is weight. Uh, the first form of it, I'm not sure what that measurement is. But anyway, one carat of weight is 200 milligrams. This, there's a lot of uh, etymology here. Okay, Middle English, carat with two R's. Uh, that is a measure of fineness in gold. From the Middle French, carat, which is a measure of fineness in gold or in weight in gems. 
from the Italian Carato, which is from the Arabic Kirat, Q-I-R-A-T, which means bean pod. Yes, a, a Kirat is a bean pod, uh, which is also just a very small weight. Uh, maybe that's a, maybe it's equivalent to a milligram or some low weight. It's like, ah, oh, it's just a bean pod. It's a carrot. Um, and then that is from the Greek keration, kerat, how do you pronounce that? Keration, uh, which is carob bean. So very similar to bean pod. It's just something very small. It's a small weight, uh, from keras, which means horn. And there's more at the word horn. Okay. Uh, next we have caravan. First were first form noun from 1588, 1A, a company of travelers on a journey through desert or hostile regions. Also, a train of pack animals. 1B, a group of vehicles traveling together, as in a file. 2A, a covered wagon or motor vehicle equipped as traveling living quarters. And then 2B is British just the number 3B definition for the word trailer. Uh, this is from Italian, caravana, from the Persian caravan, or carvan, C-A-R-V-A-N. Second form of caravan is a verb from 1885, just intransitive, which means to travel in a caravan. Next we have caravanner. Caravanner, you can have it with one N or two Ns. Noun from 1909. One, one that travels in a caravan. And number two is British. One, no, yes, one who goes camping with a trailer. Next we have caravansary. Caravansary. Uh, this is a, or, or it could also be caravansaral. Car, no, caravansary. Uh, caravansary or caravansary and the so the end is s-a-r-y or s-e-r-a-i okay noun from 1599 one an inn i-n-n an inn surrounding a court in eastern countries where caravans rest at night Uh, number two synonyms are hotel and inn a caravansary 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 so this is from Persian Karvansarai, spelled in a, you know, the Persian way, uh, from Karvan, which we read before, which means caravan, plus Sarai, which means palace or inn. So if you see a word that has uh, that sort of ending, S-A-R-Y-S-E-R-A-I, S-A-R-A-I, S-A-R, something like that, uh, that means palace or inn. So it's a place where the people in the caravan can go. Next is our last word, caravel. Uh, C-A-R-A-V-E-L, caravel. Noun from uh, 1527. Any of several sailing ships, specifically a small 15th and 16th century ship that has broad bows, high narrow poop. Yes, high narrow poop, and usually three masts with Latin or both square and Latin sails. Those are sailing terms I don't know. Uh, I mean, I've heard of the poop deck, uh, but why is it high and narrow? Is that the uh, like the railing around the side? I don't know. It is a caravel. So we had caracol, caracel, or caracol, carafe, carambola, caramel, caramelize, carangid, carapace, carrot, caravan, caravanner, caravansary, and caravel. Oh, there was a thought that I had about a word that I wanted to pick, and I can't remember which one it is. Uh, caramel, 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 caramel. Which one did I like the best? I can sing a song about whatever. I already sort of sang a song about something. Um, there are some interesting words in here, actually, though. The caracol, the first word in the half turn by a horse. Uh... Didn't know that a star fruit was called carambola. Uh, well, I think I'll just pick caramel as the word of the episode. Uh, because, you know, as I got a personal connection to that one. But there are some real good ones in here. Real, real good words in this episode, I think. I don't know about you. I don't. I really don't know about you. I don't know about you. I'm not sure about that one. 
Uh, but yeah, I'll just pick caramel as the word of the episode. Caramel is a caramel. You can't say Carmel because it's a caramel. Caramel, caramel. I don't know what's going on with me. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Today is February 6th, which means I am going to rattle off some holidays to you. Uh, The first one, and uh, possibly the most important one, is in the U.S., but also other places around the world, uh, maybe all the places in the world. It is International Day of Zero Tolerance to Female Genital Mutilation. Yes, that is a good thing to celebrate um, and make sure that this does not happen around the world. Uh, Because I know it still does, unfortunately. Um, In New Zealand, it is a Waitangi Day. Waitangi with a W. Uh, That is the day that they celebrate the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi, uh, which is considered to be New Zealand's founding document. Yay, New Zealand. Uh, In Finland and Norway, it is the Sami People's National Day. Uh, It's also that in Sweden, but it is also Laplander's National Day. So maybe those are the same thing or similar things. Um, Okay, holidays, good. First word for today is caraway. Caraway, C-A-R-A-W-A-Y. This is a noun from the 13th century. One, a biennial, usually white-flowered, aromatic, old-world herb of the carrot family. And the scientific name is carum carvi. Number two, the pungent fruit of the caraway used in seasoning and medicine, called also caraway seed. And let's see, this is from the Arabic karawiya, karawiya, uh, from the Greek karon. Uh, There are a lot of scientific words in this episode. I meant to say that before. Science people rejoice. Okay, our next word is carb, C-A-R-B, first form, noun from circa 1942. It is slang for the synonym carburetor. Second form of carb, or carbo, is a noun from 1965. Synonym is carbohydrate, Um, and then also a high-carbohydrate food. Carbohydrate, yes, I said it correctly, Uh, and that is usually used in plural. Like, I want to eat some carbs. I love my carbs. Let's have some carbs. I want some carbs. Okay, now we have the prefix carb or carbo. Uh, It is a prefix for carbon or carbonic or carbonyl or carboxyl. Uh, As in the examples, carbide and carbohydrate. Okay, next we have carbacol with a C-H-O-L at the end. This is a noun from circa 1940, a synthetic Parasympathomimetic, parasympathomimetic drug, C6H15CLN2O2, that is used in veterinary medicine and topically in glaucoma. Next we have carbamate. Noun, uh, you could also say carbamate. You could emphasize the ba, carbamate. Noun from 1888, a salt or ester of carbamic acid, especially one that is a synthetic organic insecticide. Next, we have carbamazepine. Carbamazepine, noun from 1966, a tricyclic anticonvulsant, anti, a tri, how many times do we have to say this? A tricyclic anticonvulsant and analgesic C15, H12, N2, O, used in the treatment of trigeminal neuralgia and epilepsy. I hope I said those relatively close to how they should be said. Um, And this is from combining some scientific words. Next we have carbamic acid. Carbamic acid, two words, noun from 1869, an acid, C-H3-N-O-2, Known in the form of salts and esters, that is a half amide of carbonic acid. I don't understand what any of these words are today. Uh, next, we have carbamide. Uh, carbo- no, you could say, yeah, carbamide or carbamide. Noun from 1865, synonym is urea. I think that has to do with your pee, I think. Uh, next, we have carbamino. Carbamino. So it's carb and amino in one word. 
carbamino. Uh, this is an adjective from 1922 relating to any of various carbamic acid derivatives formed by reaction of carbon dioxide with an amino acid or a protein as hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, that's a good word. Next we have carbanion, carbanion, uh, or you could say carbanion, carbide, yeah, whatever, uh, carb and anion. Noun from 1933, an organic ion carrying a negative charge, a, a negative charge on a carbon atom. Uh, and then compare to the synonym carbonium, carbo, N-I-U-M. Similar, but different. Maybe that one holds a positive charge on a carbon atom. Is that going to be in this episode? Carbo. Uh, b- 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 carbo. How do you spell it? Carbonium. I think that's, no, that's probably going to be in the next one. If we see it at all. If we see it at all. I don't know. Okay, next is, where were we? There we go. Carbarn. It's a car barn. Noun from 1880. A building that houses the cars of a street railway or the buses of a bus system. You got to put them in a place, and the place is a barn, and you call it a car barn. Boop, boop. Next is carbaril. Noun from 1963. A carbamate insecticide, C12, H11, NO2, effective especially against numerous crop, forage, and forest pests. Next, we have carbazole, noun from 1887, a crystalline, slightly basic cyclic compound, compound C12H9N, found in anthracene, anthracene, yep, and used in making dyes. Next is carbide, noun from circa 1865, one, a binary compound of carbon with a more electropositive element, especially the synonym calcium carbide. Two, a very hard material made of carbon and one or more heavy metals. Heavy metals. Carbide. I don't know. Next is carbine. No, uh, yes, you could say carbine or carbine. Uh, Noun from 1592. One, a short barreled lightweight firearm originally used by cavalry oh and i think that uh, we talked about that maybe in the last episode or something uh they people were holding a carbine number two a light short barreled repeating rifle that is used as a supplementary military arm or for hunting in dense brush uh oh carabiner or uh, that's not how you pronounce it it is a carabiner carabiner that's the one who has the carbine Next is carbonyl, noun from circa 1885. Synonym is methanol, also an alcohol derived from it. Next we have carbocyclic or uh, carbocyclic. Either one is fine. Adjective from 1899, being or having an organic ring composed of carbon atoms. And our last word is carbohydrase. Carbohydrase, carbohydrase, different ways. C A R B O H Y D R A S E. There might be a sneeze. Noun from 1910. Any of a group of enzymes as amylase that promote. <coughs> they promote sneezes. Nope, they don't. Uh, that promote hydrolysis or synthesis of a carbohydrate. And then in parentheses, as a disaccharide. Uh, so. We, okay, let's just read the words. Uh, we had caraway, carb, uh, carb, carbo, carbacol, carbamate, carbamazepine, carbamic, carb, carbamic acid, carbamide, carbamino, carbanion, carbani, carb, carb, carbanion, um, carbarn, carbaril, carbazole, carbide, carbine, carbinol, carbocyclic, carbohydrates that's it um if you look at these words and you know enough about science you can probably figure out somewhat what they are just based on the prefixes the suffixes all the different things that are in there that's what's so cool about these science words is that when you know a certain amount you can actually figure out what something is to a certain extent 
Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, you know, like seeing all these carb, uh, about carb prefixes, you can probably figure out it's related to carbon in some way, most of them, um, which, uh, and then, you know, hydrase, that's probably dealing with water of some kind. That's about all I know. Anyway, I'm going to pick carb barn as the word of the episode, because I like that word. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I th- I I welcome you into my home, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, to to today is February seventh, and according to this, uh, today is the Super Bowl. I don't know who's playing in it. I don't know if there are still games happening, but supposedly today is the Super Bowl. Uh, and then in Australia and Canada, it is Rose Day, so they maybe have some roses outside. I don't know. Okay, our first word is carbohydrate. Carbohydrate. Noun from 1853. Any of various neutral compounds of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, most of which are formed by green plants and which constitute a major class of animal foods. I'm an animal and I eat food and I like carbohydrates. Uh, And the examples are sugars, starches, and celluloses. Next we have carbolic. Noun from 1884, the number one definition for the word phenol, P-H-E-N-O-L. That is the synonym. Next is carbolic acid, two words, noun from circa 1859. Again, phenol number one, the first definition for phenol. Uh, This is from the carb prefix plus oleum. Uh, the Latin word oleum, and that means oil, and there's more at the word oil. Next is carbo-load, two words with a hyphen, intransitive verb from 1981, to consume a large amount of carbohydrates through food intake, usually in order to improve performance in an upcoming athletic event as a marathon. I think we probably carbo-loaded before our marathon, but I really don't remember. Most people have pasta. Did I have pasta? I don't remember. It was years ago. Next is car bomb. Two words, probably not a good one. Noun from 1972. An explosive device concealed in an automobile for use as a weapon of terrorism. I feel like you see this a lot in movies, uh, thrillers, and uh, other kinds of movies like that. They like to use car bombs to blow people up. Um... Not good. Please don't do that. Just in general. Just don't do that. Okay. Next one. It's a big one. It is the word carbon. Noun from 1789. I think most of us, me included, don't fully understand how important carbon is to us. Okay. Number one. A non-metallic, chiefly tetravalent element found native or as a constituent of coal, petroleum, and asphalt of limestone, Uh, and other carbonates and of organic compounds or obtained artificially in varying degrees of purity, especially as carbon black, lamp black, activated carbon, charcoal, and coke. Coke? Like, you drink coke? I don't know. Uh, And then there were a couple other examples natively in diamonds and graphite. Oh, and then it says to see the element table. Yes, carbon is one of the elements. Is it number six or eight? I think it might be six because I think it has six things on it and I think maybe oxygen is eight that's about that's almost all I know there's a little bit more but that's about it moving on to number two a carbon rod used in an arc lamp 3a a sheet of carbon paper and 3b the synonym carbon copy and uh, yeah this is from the latin carbo uh, which is ember or charcoal Next is carbonaceous, adjective from 1791. One, relating to, containing, or composed of carbon. Two, rich in carbon. It is so carbonaceous, that coal that we've got there. Next is carbonado or carbonado. First form noun from eight, no, 1584. This is archaic and it is a piece of meat scored before grilling. 
You put some, uh, you cut some lines into it. Carbonado. This is a Spanish word. Uh, now we have the second form of carbonado or carbonado, uh, which I would wish, I wish that this was a, a tornado made of carbon or something like that, but I don't think it is. Uh, this one is a transitive verb from 1599. Number, uh, they're both archaic. Number one, to make a carbonado of. I think that's connected to the first one. And then number two, synonyms are cut and slash. Uh, so I'm guessing that this Spanish word um, means cutting or slashing or something like that. Um, and then the third form of carbonado is a noun from 1853, an impure opaque, dark-colored, fine-grained aggregate of diamond particles valuable for its superior toughness. Uh, That would be, a carbonado would be a tornado of diamond particles. And then this is a Portuguese word, literally it means carbonated. Is this connected to how, how we think of carbonated? Or is that spelled differently? I don't know. Carbonate, oh yeah, carbon dioxide, bubbly, Plus, I don't know. Moving on to carbonara, noun from 1963. A dish of hot pasta into which other ingredients have been mixed, like eggs, bacon, ham, grated cheese. And this is often used as a post-positive modifier, as in spaghetti carbonara. Post-positive, post means after. uh, So it's after the, the pasta word, spaghetti and then after that is carbonara, but I don't know what the positive means in that case. Are there post-negative modifiers? I have so much to learn. This is Italian. Carbonara literally means in the manner of a charcoal maker. In the manner of a charcoal maker? What is a charcoal maker? What is, how is charcoal related to this? They're just putting in other, I don't know. Okay, now we have carbonate. First form, noun from 1794. A salt or ester of carbonic acid. Second form of carbonate is a verb, transitive verb, from 1805. One, to convert into a carbonate. Two, to combine or infuse with carbon dioxide. As in carbonated beverages. And carbonation is a noun. That is the nation of people who carbo-load. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a big fan of carbonated beverages. Uh, you know, I used to drink a lot of pop and stuff, but I don't know, just the carbonation, the sugar, the bubbles. Um, it's not, I'm not super into it. Can't even think of the last time I had a pop. Okay. Next we have carbon black, two words, noun from circa 1889, any of various colloidal black substances consisting wholly or principally of carbon obtained usually as soot and used especially in tires and in pigments. So probably to make them look more black. Carbon black. I feel like, so there's that show, Orphan Black, which I've never seen, and there's carbon, I don't know. Is there something there? Maybe. Next is carbon copy. Two words, noun from 1895. One, a copy made by carbon paper. Most of you don't know what that is, probably... Number two synonym is duplicate or duplicate. I don't know which which context this would be. Um, Oh, but we have an example. Is a carbon copy of his father. So duplicate, I think. Um, Carbon copy, that is carbon copy. Next is carbon cycle. Two words, noun. Uh, We've got two very long definitions for this. Noun from 1912. One because, you know, it's carbon cycle is, uh, that's what makes the world go round. The cycle of carbon in the Earth's ecosystems, in which carbon dioxide is fixed by photosynthetic organisms to form, I don't know what is happening, uh, is fixed by photosynthetic organisms to form organic nutrients and is ultimately restored to the inorganic state as by respiration, protoplasmic decay, or combustion. That is how that happens. Combustion is fire. Uh, respiration is like the trees and we uh, breathe out. And then protoplasmic decay. Not sure what that is. Number two, a cycle of thermonuclear reactions in which four hydrogen atoms synthesize into a helium atom by the cata- catalytic catalytic action 
of carbon with the release of nuclear energy in which is and which is held to be the source of most of the energy radiated by the sun and stars. Woo! So much stuff happening there. Okay, our last word is carbon dating. Two words, noun from 1951. The determination of the age of old material as an archaeological or paleontological specimen by means of the content of carbon-14. So they, they know, I, I, I have a little bit of more information for you, they know how long carbon-14 lives. It has a half-life. So if the half-life is like a million years, then after a million years, I don't know what the number actually is. I could be totally wrong. i probably totally wrong. Uh, but if the half-life is a million years, that means half of carbon-14 is gone after a million years. After another million years, another half of it is gone. Uh, and so they they look at it and they can say, oh, well, this is from this year because we know it's half-life and we can sort of work it out backwards uh, because they know how much would have originally been in there, I guess. I don't know how that works. Anyway, carbon date is a transitive verb. Hey, babe, would you like to go on a carbon date with me? So we had carbohydrate, carbolic, carbolic acid, carbo-load, carbom, carbon carbonaceous, carbonado or carbonado, carbonara, carbonate, carbon black, carbon copy, carbon cycle, and carbon dating. Hmm. There were definitely some good ones in here. I have to think of both. Um, What do I want to make a song out of? Because I didn't do that in the rest of the episode. I don't think I did. And then which one did I like the best? Which one is, well, I think uh, carbon dating is uh, it's just a very good scientific method uh, of finding out how old things are. I mean, carbon is good, too, I guess. Carbon is okay. Um, so, let's see. When you want to go on a date and you want to... F- I, d- um, I don't know. I think I might just skip it this time. Okay. Thank you very, very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I don't know what happened there. Today is February 8th, and uh, there are no holidays or observances in the U.S., but in Australia, it is the Ragata. And in Slovenia, it is Slovenian Cultural Holiday. Slovenian Cultural Holiday. So you celebrate all the culture that is in Slovenia. Okay, so our first word is carbon dioxide. Uh, uh, This is two words, noun from 1869, a heavy colorless gas, CO2, and uh, you could look look at that and figure it out from the name. It's got carbon, and it, di, is a prefix for two in this case, and oxide, that's oxygen, so there's two oxygen and one carbon, that's CO2. Okay, so a heavy colorless gas, CO2, that does not support combustion, dissolves in water to form carbonic acid, is formed especially in animal respiration and in the decay or combustion of animal and vegetable matter, is absorbed from the air by plants in photosynthesis, and is used in the carbonation of beverages. You breathe it out, you can get it, you can put it in your drinks, and the plants love it, and um, yeah, that's good for that. Carbon dioxide, it's some important stuff. Next, we have carbon disulfide. So I'm going to say that this is, uh, there's got, there's two, there's two sulfides. Is it sulfide or is it sulfur, sulf, something, sulfur? Maybe it's sulfur. Noun from 1869. A colorless, flammable, poisonous liquid, CS2, used as a solvent for rubber and as an insect fumigant, called also Carbon bisulfide. That is the other prefix for two, or one of the other ones, bisulfide. Next we have carbon fiber. Two words, noun from 1960. You gotta get your fiber, but you don't want to eat this fiber. A very strong, lightweight synthetic fiber made especially by carbonizing acrylic fiber at high temperatures. Next we have carbon footprint. Noun from 1999. The amount of greenhouse gases and specifically carbon dioxide emitted by something during a given period. And then we have an example um, after emitted by something 
as a person's activities or a product's manufacture and transport. There are lots of websites and probably apps that you can figure out what your carbon footprint is. Uh, so you can do a lot of things to reduce your carbon footprint, and I strongly suggest that you all do that. Uh, obviously, there's recycling and taking a bike instead of a car, and those things are very obvious. And also, you eat less meat and dairy, you're also going to lower your carbon footprint. And the world and the plants and the animals... Uh, and Mother Nature are going to very much appreciate that. Carbon footprint. Next is carbon-14. We learned about this a little bit in carbon dating, so let's learn more about it. Noun from 1936. A heavy radioactive isotope of carbon of mass number 14 used especially in tracer studies and in dating old materials as archaeological and geological specimens. I think it's funny that the example here said archaeological and geological, but in the carbon dating example, it said archaeological or paleontology, paleont, paleontolo, paleontological, paleontological. Maybe I said that word wrong before. So that's carbon-14. Next is carbonic adjective from 1788 of relating to or derived from carbon, carbonic acid, or carbon dioxide. It is so carbonic. Uh, next, we have carbonic acid. Yeah, we're still in a, a mix of science words. I think we're going to be seeing them through the, at least the rest of this page. Uh, okay, what are we on? We are on carbonic acid. This is a noun from 1788, a weak dibasic acid H2CO3, known only in solution, known only in solution that reacts with bases to form carbonates. Next is carbonic acid gas. Ooh, I got that carbonic acid gas. Noun from 1797. Synonym is just carbon dioxide. Next is carbonic anhydrase. Anhydrase. Uh, this is a noun from 1932. Get ready. A zinc-containing enzyme that occurs in living tissues as red blood cells and aids carbon dioxide transport from the tissues and its release from the blood in the lungs by catalyzing the reversible hydration of carbon dioxide to carbonic acid. Uh, okay. It's, uh, it promotes dehydration. That's what I'm seeing in the etymology. Anhydrous, yeah, it's an, so it's like not hydrated. Yeah, okay, next is carboniferous. This is an adjective from 1799. One, producing or containing carbon or coal. Two is capitalized, of relating to or being the period of the Paleozoic era between the Devonian and the Permian or the corresponding system of rocks that includes coal beds. And then you got to see the geological timetable. Carboniferous is also a noun. Uh, there was lots of carbon happening during that time, I guess. Next, we have carbonium. We learned about this a couple episodes ago. There was an example. Um, so the uh, carbonion, carbonion was the uh, negative charge, an ion carrying a negative charge of a carbon atom. And then it said compared to carbonium. So let's learn about that. It is a noun from 1942, an organic ion carrying a positive charge on a carbon atom, and then compared to carbanion. See, I did, carb, carbanion, carbanion, carbanion. That is not how I would want to say that word. But anyway, uh, how do you? How are you going to figure out which one is positive and which one is negative? Um, the one ends in ion which is what it is. It's an ion. That's the negative charge. And then the other one is ium or ium, ium, ium. That's the positive one. I don't know. Carbonization is next. Noun from 1804. The process of carbonizing, especially the synonym destructive distillation. Next is carbonize. Verb from 1806. First is transitive. One, to convert into carbon or a carbonic residue. Number two, 
Uh, we have the number one definition for carburize as the synonym. And then intransitive, to become carbonized. Synonym is char, C-H-A-R. Next is carbonless. You don't want to be carbonless. Adjective from 1850. One, being without carbon. Two, being or composed of paper that makes multiple copies without intervening intervening layers of carbon paper, as in carbonless forms. Next is carbon monoxide. Uh, so we this is only one oxygen uh, atom, other uh, compared to our first word, which had two oxygen atoms. This only has one. It is a noun from 1869, a colorless, odorless, very toxic gas. Very, very bad. Very bad. Very toxic gas, CO, that is formed as a product of the incomplete combustion of carbon or a carbon compound. Be careful with carbon monoxide. You will probably die. You might want to get a carbon monoxide uh, sensor in your house if you don't already have one. They will very, very much help you because you can't see it, you can't smell it, you don't know when it's there, and yeah, you, you don't want to run into this problem. Okay, our last word is carbonade. I really want to say carbonade, but it is carbonade. C-A-R-B-O-N-N-A-D-E. So there's two N's, or you could spell it with just one N. Noun from 1877. A beef stew cooked in beer. Okay. A, a beer a beer beef stew. This is French. Carbonade literally means dish of grilled meat. It is from Italian, carbonata, from carbone or carbone, which means charcoal or coal, and that is good for that. Why is beer in there? I don't know. So we had carbon dioxide, carbon disulfide, carbon fiber, carbon footprint, carbon-14, carbonic, carbonic acid, carbonic acid gas, carbonic anhydrase, carboniferous, carbonium, carbonization, carbonize, carbonless, carbon monoxide, and carbonade, or no, carbonade. I feel like it should be a lemonade with some carbon thrown in there. Man, there are a lot of words that start with carbon. So I think I'm going to pick carbon footprint as the word of the episode because you got to make sure that your carbon footprint is low. Let's make it into a song. All the decisions that you make in your life will affect your carbon footprint. So make some decisions to lower your carbon footprint and the world's going to thank you. And I'm going to thank you. And all the plants are going to thank you. I'm Okay. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye.